guys and welcome back to my channel. So if you are rejoining me today, thank you so much for joining and I really hope you enjoy the video. If you are brand new, a very warm welcome to you and thank you so much for if you've just stumbled across this video just clicking on it or if you've been recommended, thank you so much for joining. So my name is Beth, I have been cross stitching since August of 2020 so still fairly new to this. And I really started Floss Tube to document my journey of cross stitch. I'm very much a person who likes to look back at where I came from to see if I've improved or anything like that. So as always, I firstly want to apologise if there is any noise in the background. These students are in their rooms working. It is my day off, but obviously living on site means you end up with the noise. So I do apologise if you can hear them upstairs. Hopefully I'm timing this right so we won't end up with them moving around quite a lot at break time but as um, schools are still closed in the UK we're under the general lockdown still so they are on site but lessons are in their rooms so you may hear a little bit of noise I do apologise for that in advance. I don't have too much to show. Um, I did a video two weeks ago because I was a little bit late at the start of the year with my um, floss tube but I still have a little bit so I wanted to try and get back on track of having my monthly update of floss tube and then I might be trialing a video every two weeks which is just kind of a little kind of clip of what I've been doing maybe a little catch up or showing you some um, some things that I have in haul because I tend to forget what I've got by the end of the month because when I get it in I want to use it straight away. But I do have a little bit to show you today. I have surprisingly two finishes. I'm quite happy that I managed to get my finishes in. So I am just going to jump in. As always all of the details for um, what I stitched on, the designer, the pattern name, the threads that I've used are all down in the description box below if you just want to scroll down in case I don't mention it during the video because some of these I've shown quite a few times now um, and if you're brand new to the channel I sometimes forget that you may not have seen the videos in the past. So the first um, thing I'm actually going to start with is my favourite item for the week and I have to say that has been my note shelf app on my tablet so I have a Samsung tablet I treated myself to a new one this Christmas and I absolutely love it it has meant that I can have my digital patterns on my tablet be able to cross it off if I want to I don't always cross off patterns but some I want to make notes or see where I'm at so I really do love the fact that I can use that directly so that has meant also I don't have to print as many patterns because even though I have a little printer technically it's broken at the moment um it it was just that having to connect it and print it off was just driving me insane and then I just would never print anything so what I found is I use the note shelf app on the Samsung um, which is available for all Android tablets I use that for all of my PDF patterns now. I know you can get Pattern Keeper, but I haven't yet ventured into trying that. I just quite like the way that this one worked. And then also, if I design any of my own patterns, I can open it up in that app straight away and just stitch from that. So that has been absolutely brilliant. It also means I can stitch some of the cross stitch patterns from the magazines that I get on Readly. And I don't have to try and work out how to print those off. I can just stitch directly from there. So that has been my best new thing of um, this month. Has been using the Note Shelf app. So going into finishes. I did it. I finished my first block. Um, it's Spring Fever by Blackbird Designs. I absolutely love how it turned out. I am deciding that I am going to, because they have initials on some of the blocks, I'm going to dedicate those to members of my family. So this one is one of my sister's initials. So I changed it to an A and that is the only thing changed. I'm stitching this on a 16 count chromatic alchemy in the color June. And I'm using all of the called for DMCs. 
throughout the whole thing I am going to be using DMCs just so um, it's consistent. I didn't want to buy all of the overdyed threads because I do quite like the fact that the fabric um, it still gets to stand out. I think if I'm using overdyed threads I tend to use a plainer fabric but for this one I fell in love with the fabric. It is absolutely gorgeous. Can you? I'm not sure if you can see the mottling on camera. It's just such a lovely colour. I wanted that to kind of shine as well as the stitching. I have decided though for a couple of the blocks where it's got houses in I am going to use the overdyed threads either the called for or um, switching it out because I do love how that turns out. So that was my first finish of the past two weeks. My second one is I am taking part in the made to create sale. So technically it's not a fully finish but I have finished the part that's come out and this is how my one turned out. So I'm stitching this, it's my first time ever using even weave and I'm stitching this one over one. It's 20 count Balana in ivory. I'm not sure if it's ivory or cream. So yeah, and I am using Drodry Designs threads. They are absolutely stunning. I will list them down below, but they are all um, variegated threads and the colors are absolutely stunning. I mean, some of them have got more variegation than others, um, but you can see they are all gorgeous. So, absolutely love these. Definitely check her out. She's a UK-based um, dyer. I have, I mentioned in the past, my January kit um, subscription hasn't come in. Otherwise, I'll be showing you that. I will make sure to put up pictures on my Instagram. So, if you're not checking me out on Instagram. I will leave the link down in the description box below but it is absolutely stunning I love the variegation especially in this paint here absolutely gorgeous so that is the first part and the second part comes out on the 25th of February so that one will now sit away until the next part comes out and then I will work on that towards the end of the month my then it's going into whips. So my whip go for January's numbers, sorry, that came out. One of mine I showed you in my last video, It um, one of the numbers called for me was to stitch a small. So I did my 2021 loading that I showed you in my last video. The other one that came up was 300 stitches on a Boffy Fred's kit. So. I picked to do Sunshine, which is this gorgeous duck here. Um, I plan to give this one away as a gift, but it's not until the end of this year. So I'm just going to take my time and stitch on it. And I just stitched the 300 stitches that I needed. So I haven't got too much done. Um, this is on the using all of the called for items in the kit. So it came with the 14 count Ada which I am struggling with. I'm struggling with the fact that this is on 14 count Ada. Um, I am doing it two over one because it's Ada. I don't mind the coverage too much on this. It is quite nice, but I, I can now remember why I don't like stitching on Ada. However, I am going to be um, completing this one, obviously, as it is a gift. So yeah, that's the design. I've only got a little tiny bit of this portion up here done just enough to do my 300 stitches to complete that goal. But I do have a Buffy Freds. I've just put any kit because there are a couple that I've purchased recently that I really, really want to start. I managed to get hold of the London one with the kind of the London scene and then Windsor up at the top because I don't actually live too far away from Windsor. And it's the scene with the Windsor Castle, which I see on the train as I go into Windsor and I absolutely love that scene so that one's coming I don't know whether on the next whip go round when it's called to stitch on 300 stitches on a Buffy threads kit whether I use that or whether I use sunshine it just depends but I love how this kit is so easy that I can take it with me because it has everything it needs so this potentially may be my work bag kit um, I'm just going to wait and see. So my 
last whip for this month and I'm sorry I don't have the picture with me because it's on my tablet and my tablet's charging at the moment so I will make sure to insert a picture up on the screen here is the Autumn Lane Stitchery Love Grows Here. So let me just, I just need to grab a piece of paper. So with this one, I am not using the core for colours at all. I'm changing it myself. There wasn't that many colours in there. So I'm actually using needle paint threads, which are discontinued, but I ended up with some in my stash. Um, I bought them, I can't remember where I got them, but I saw them, absolutely love them. So I thought I'm going to use these in this project here because that was my friend's wedding colours. Um, it's going to be her anniversary next month so I was thinking I might give this to her. So I'm changing it all purples and obviously the white for the fence of the house. So this is actually going to be one of my goals for this month. I really want to try and get this finished by the 14th of February. I don't normally set myself um, goals in terms of like specific dates I'll say I want to get this done in February or I want to get this done in March because I'm not normally a goal person but this one has been my main focus stitch for the past two weeks maybe a bit longer basically I started it a couple of days after it came out and I absolutely love it I love stitching the autumn lane pieces and I am going to make it kind of an unwritten rule this year to always have one autumn lane stitchery piece in my rotation because whenever I am stressed whenever I am having a difficult day and I say to myself oh I don't want to do any stitching I don't want to do anything when I sit down with one of the autumn lane designs it just calms me down so much I can stitch on anything however it doesn't always relax me I thought the other companies, I love their pieces, don't get me wrong, but Autumn Lane Stitchery, the way that it is designed, the way the piece comes together, it is just so relaxing. And then I find I can't put it down. So I have now started setting a timer on my phone because otherwise I will stay up stitching all night because those pieces are absolutely amazing. So I have Love Grows here, which I'm currently working on. I also have Autumn Town in my... Um, stash which I did start with the whip go not the whip go with the sow that still city stitches started on boxing days 26th of December um, I started it I've done a little bit of work but then love grows here came out and that was it I saw the pattern I knew who I was going to gift it to non-stop stitching but that is going to be one of my unwritten rules this year is I will have an autumn lane stitchery in my rotation and work on it every single month. So I will have one that I will at least dedicate two days of stitching and I know that doesn't sound much but I have pieces that I have deadlines for, things like that, whereas the autumn lanes I'm, I'm considering having to stitch another Love Grows here because I don't want to give it up. Like I know this one is for my friend and I've done it in her wedding colours and it should go to her but I'm still asking myself whether by the end of the 14th of February, whether I can get another one stitched so I don't have to give this one up. I am terrible. But yes. She will see this video and she will message me and tell me that she's going to steal this piece if I don't give it to her. So I should probably get this one finished and then I will stitch another one for me in my... I'm not sure what colours I would do because I'm obviously not married, still single, but I love the piece. So I'm not sure what colours I would do. I may do the called for colours because he is a wizard with his colours. Um, but I don't know. But I will definitely be stitching it again at some point for myself. But then I also want to work on Autumn Town. So I don't know. They've just got so many nice patterns. I've got about five or six of their patterns kitted ready to start that I have to tell myself I'm not allowed more than two of their patterns at once 
because otherwise I just would not stitch on anything else and I have so many things that I want to stitch or I need to stitch because they're going to be gifts. I don't know but Autumn Lane Stitchery if you haven't checked it out I will leave it down in the description box below. Check them out. They're absolutely amazing. They also have a sale going on um, which is lovely. I just I'm not a mermaid under the seat. I'm not saying it's a mermaid, we don't know what it is, but an under the sea um, person. I still want to stitch it low just because it's gorgeous, but I'm trying to work my way through the other patterns that they have that I know I will display because I just need to kind of call it. Otherwise they're going to think I'm a weird stalker, but I do love their stuff, so go and check them out. I should have included this in finishes, I just didn't. I, this month, went a bit mad making project bags. I've been kitting quite a few things up because I am no longer allowed to spend any money on cross-stitching patterns unless Autumn Lane brings anything out, that is on my exception. I'm still allowed my monthly kits. I've only got the Jodry Designs Fabric and Fred Club um, that's the only one I'm subscribed to at the moment and if any of the projects that I am currently working on runs out of Fred obviously I will buy more Fred so I can finish those off but from now until end of March no more spending on patterns fabric or designs because everything that I have that I want to get stitched is kitted Hence why I kitted all of my Autumn Lane stitchery pieces. Not that I'm going to be able to stitch them all in a month and a bit. But I'm going to try at least two months. May push it to three months. Because I have spent so much over Christmas. Because I was here on my own. I was like, I'm going to treat myself. It's Christmas. And then at the start of the year, some people had sales. So I bought more stuff. So I do have some haul pieces coming in. I have my two boffy thread kits, I have some patterns that I got off of eBay, um, I also have an order from Peakside Needleworks and I think I have one from Patchwork Rabbit, I'm not sure, that may have arrived today, I haven't checked the post yet. So those ones I have and also I have my Hawk Run Horror series, I will be buying the fabric for that because I'm, I've already ordered it. I'm just waiting for it to come in because um, I'm getting that from Peakside Needleworks and the lovely Sue has been amazing and she has ordered it. So when that comes in, um, it'll either this month or next month, then that is something that I've already put aside to purchase, but I'm not allowed to purchase anything else. So because I have so many things kitted up and they're just sitting in plastic bags. I really don't like having so many plastic bags um, with kits in. So I made myself some more project bags. So mine aren't brilliant. I am not good with the sewing machine, but they work. I can unzip them. I can put my stuff in them. So please don't come at me for the stitching, but I just used whatever fabric I had. I have this gorgeous bee fabric. This is my favourite. Look at how cute these doggies are. And yes, you can see the doggies through because I was lazy and didn't put any backing in this one, which I now kind of regret because you can see the dogs through on the other side, but it's a project bag. It's gonna have gorgeous stitching in. And when it has stitching in, you don't even see the other side. This one, love this fabric. And yes. I may have had this one folded like this for a while, but you can clearly see I didn't iron it. Note to self, I should iron things in the future. Another bee print, just with purple on the inside. Of course, I got another Harry Potter one. These two next ones I love. So this is more of a canvasy fabric. So I've got the bee print on the inside and then they came with matching cushion panels. So I managed to, I'm not sure if you can really see that, it's a bee on the inside. That was the front of the cushion panel and then that was the fabric I ordered. And then this one, 
I love the German Shepherds on the back. The German Shepherd in the front kind of scares me a little bit. His eyes look a bit scary, but absolutely gorgeous. So I have got some more project bags, which means I can put my um, some of my kitted projects in there, and then that's perfect. So I do have a little bit of haul that has um, already arrived. So I have been seeing everyone rave about these. So this one is Pip and Chip. Um, sorry, this one is from Pip and Chip. And it is a kind of stitch marker. So you can see the inches. So if you want, you put this in the corner of your fabric. And if you're starting in the corner, so like I did for Love Grows Here, I started with a border. And I originally measured this with a ruler. But everyone was raving about it. I saw this one had these gorgeous bees on it. And be more creative. I needed one. So what you do is you just line this up in the corner and then if you wanted a three inch, you just put your needle through and you know when you start here on this point of the fabric, it is three inch border. I've been using this a couple of times, um, more for like checking my fabric size. So to see what size um, border I would want on projects. But I absolutely love this. This is going to be sitting in my main stitching kit. And I'm so happy I got that. I then picked up the Cross Stitch magazine. As I said before, I have the Readly app. So I generally stitch all of the things that I want from there. But occasionally, if the magazine has so many patterns in it that I really like, I do buy it. And then that way I have the patterns on here so I don't forget because that's one of the things I do forget from the Readly app. I know you can bookmark them but I'm not always too great at bookmarking them. So I love the sampler that's featured on the front so I'm probably going to maybe stitch that at some point. But the one that I fell in love with is, I think this is a Duran Jones, let me double check. Yeah, it's a Duran Jones and it's called Stitching Heaven. And it's this one here. So it is pretty much full coverage. I love it. Absolutely love it. This is something I can imagine when I eventually get, um, when I eventually buy a flat or get my own house, having a stitching room and this would be the piece I would want on the wall. Obviously I want everything on the wall, but this one would be one of the central pieces absolutely love that so I am going to be stitching that I can't decide because I haven't kitted it up yet whether I'm just going to wait until I have finished my no spend and kit it up or whether I'm going to use a sulky thread because I have pretty much the entire collection of sulky threads I absolutely love using them and whether just to colour convert this to sulky because I'm I have so much fabric in my stash, I'm sure I can find um, a piece of fabric that I can use for this. Admittedly, a lot of my fabric is over dyed fabric from Drodtree Designs or Chromatic Alchemy, so I'd have to see, but I'm sure I could find some kind of neutral fabric that I could stitch this on. I'm just going to see because I do have a couple of things that I want to do, but this one is definitely one I want to stitch. I want to start it this year. Um, I'm in... I'm not going to be going anywhere anytime soon, so it's not like I have a deadline for it, but the reason I bought this magazine is so I never forget that I want to stitch this. So I have that one. I then, um, back in December, I ordered the Owl Forest Embroidery Geese and Sunflowers. So I bought the digital pattern. But then everyone was saying about how good their kits were and things like that. And when I was on the website, it was at the time where they didn't really have much in stock. But they did have, and I'm sorry, I still have it in the plastic. Um, they did have the floss, so the thread, for this pattern. So I got the thread needed to stitch the geese and sunflowers. Um, and at this time I was very adamant that I was only an Ada stitcher and I would never stitch on anything else. It's amazing how it's only like four weeks later 
and I'm obsessed with even weave. Love it. But yeah, so I didn't buy, they did have the option for the full kit of this, but I was like, I don't want the fabric. Um, so I just got the digital pattern. I have a grey piece of Ada in my stash that I can use. I bought the thread and then I don't remember doing this, but obviously I bought the matching needle minder as well. Brilliant. So I'm just going to have this one in my stash. I'm not sure when I'm going to stitch it. I kind of feel like this is a summer piece. But I have it. It's all kitted. I can start it whenever I want. So I have that one. And then recently um, I saw this Apples of Youth pattern. So I was... I'm sorry, I'm not sure if you can see that. And once again, I got the printed shirt. So what I'm doing with... Um, the digital chart. What I'm doing is I print the cover photo so I can put it in the project bag with the item and then I just make a note when I'm stitching that it's on the app so that way I know where the pattern is um, because I like having the the page sorry I've got the hiccups the page printed so I can see what goes in which project bag um, because I do have quite a few whips now on the go at once. I think I'm up to 10 and I don't want to go too much above 10. So I need to be good about starting things. Um, but yeah, so I have this and then everything's on the app. But I loved this and I ordered a couple of different colorways of Jodry Designs threads um, to stitch this in. So I'm not sure what color I'm going to do, but I absolutely love her threads and I thought what better way of showing off a independent um, company it is she's based in the UK absolutely love it so I'm gonna use her thread and this pattern it's gonna look gorgeous so I'm just waiting um, for the threads to arrive and then this one will be all ready to go because I already have a piece of fabric for it I did manage to get this one came in from eBay the Scarlet House a perfect world I purchased off eBay a couple of different patterns and I'm sorry I haven't taken this out of the um, plastic so I hope you don't get too much of a stare. I wanted to get a couple of different types of patterns. I wanted a couple of more like samplerish patterns um, as well as some smalls because I've noticed a lot of my projects that I'm stitching at the moment are big projects which I like to have over the month to pick up and show. But I also feel at the moment I need to stitch some smalls. So this is in no way a small pattern. It is 250 by 187. But it looked a really nice. I just, something about it jumped out at me. I have got the, oh I can't remember which one it is. I have ordered another one, um, which is one that I plan to stitch before I stitch this one. But when I saw this on eBay, it was dirt cheap. I was like, I need this in my stash. So I have this. If I stitch this in the next couple of months, it will be converted into sulky threads. Um, if not, it's just going to be in my stash. And I'm. this may be a nice one to take when hopefully in the summer I can travel back home because it is the same kind of colours as a couple of other patterns I have on the go. But also, I could leave the black here and when I'm sitting on the plane I can do the fill-in part but I don't know I saw it I wanted it I grabbed it so for plans so whip go I had the next two numbers called um I think they were 20 and 4 I'm not sure which one of these is number 20 and which one's 4 I just know I have to do these two so I ended up with Lose the Feather series, so I have to stitch one block. So, block number two. Um, this one is The Light Upon the Lawn. So this is going to be my next Blackbird Designs. And I have to say, this first block that I did, It's a Spring Fever, is my first Blackbird Designs pattern that I've stitched. I can see why everyone's obsessed. Love it. So yeah, that is going to be my next um, whip go. So my next whip go cord was to stitch one chart from Little House Needlework Hometown Holiday Series. 
this is um there is quite a few more charts in this series i've got one two three four five six seven eight nine i'm going to be stitching nine i'm going to do them a three by three um block all as one piece and i saw these at december no it must have been saw december probably about october november and i was watching the series when calls the heart love binge watching that in october and november just really makes me feel like festive wintry vibes but yeah so i saw that series and was like when i saw these patterns i was like oh my god it's the little village i love it so my pattern that i'm going to do as my first one is the post office so that is the chart that i'm going to finish this month um but also i'm then going to have the bookstore right next door to it i'm going to have pop's filling station I'm just showing you the patterns by the way, I'm only, I'm only stitching the first one this month. Then on the next row down, so underneath the post office, I'm going to have the coffee shop. And these are shown individually stitched, but I'm going to do it all as one. In the middle, I'm going to have the caroling quartet. I'm then going to have the mercantile. I had to have the mercantile if I'm doing this theme. Um, the last row, is, the first book, is going to be the Needle Workshop. Of course, you have to have one. Oh no, sorry, I've mixed. I'm not sure the order of the last row, I haven't quite decided yet. Because I'm also going to have, I think the first one on the last row is going to be Main Street Station. Well, that might be the last one, I really don't know. But the middle one on that row is going to be the Schoolhouse. Because you, you definitely need that in the when calls the heart so that is going to be the nine charts that i'm going to do i will double check the order that i'm going to stitch them in um i have planned it out but i clearly am not prepared for this and haven't checked it so yes for the month of february for whipgo i'm going to be stitching the post office um but yes so that is my start and i'm not sure i i've obviously kitted this up at two different moments because I've got all the DMC called for colours but then I've got all of the called for uh, classic colour works I think it's all classic colour works that it's called for yeah so I obviously kitted this up with DMC from my stash and then when I ordered more patterns oh I know what I did I ordered more patterns because I needed to get to a set amount in order for free postage and I don't know why I struggle paying postage I mean I wasn't even like close to the postage but I was like I'm not paying postage so I went through and added all the classic color works that I needed I don't know so yes I have classic color works and DMC I think the charts call for a bit of both yeah from the looks of it there's on the first one for instance the post office there's four DMC's and five classic color works so i guess i need all of it but i have that all ready to go with my fabric and i'm planning to stitch that on a 16 count golden country entry golden needle i can't speak sorry 16 count gold country french golden ada and I have that an 18 by 25 piece. So I think that's big enough for all of them. But yes, that is going to be what I'm going to be stitching this series on. So that is that. So any other plans? I have been watching so many people finish smalls. Now I've had a couple of finishes um, and I absolutely love them. But one thing... I do notice is one I'm not someone who fully finishes pieces and that is mainly because the bigger pieces I don't have anywhere to display them I have to be careful with what I put on the walls I tried putting a cross stitch piece up but the only thing I'm allowed to use is blue tack and I don't think that's probably the best thing to be attaching I mean if I backed it and stuff and mounted it onto foam board but it's it's the weight of them um, so I have to be very careful with that so I've been watching people making the little pillows and having a little tray 
with the little pieces in pillows and I'm obsessed absolutely love the idea so before my no ban so at the end of January I purchased and I'm waiting for it to come in on Hobbycraft I got a little white tray um, whitewash wood tray and that's what I'm going to do my smalls in so I am going to go through and have a look at what smalls I have have a look at the Readly app see what is on there that I want to stitch so that is going to be something I'm going to have a look into I really want to display some of my work but my bigger pieces I can't the other thing I'm thinking about is maybe covering some foam board and making like a little mini bulletin board that I can put up here behind me and then I can put the pieces on there temporarily so at least I'm displaying some of them because at the moment I feel really guilty I finish them and they go in the box under my bed I don't really have too many people I can gift cross stitch to um, so they just end up under the bed but I love the process of stitching it and that is what has really calmed me down relaxed me given me a hobby I absolutely love it so I'm not going to stop cross stitching but I want to find a way that I can display some things. So if you have some ideas on how you can display things where you've got minimal, minimal surface space and you can't put things on the wall, if you've got ideas, please let me know down below because I would love to check out some different things. Um, someone mentioned to me I could put some little frames on bookshelves, but you can see a little bit of my bookshelf. I, because it's quite a small room, I live here full time and I obviously need the space to work. I don't really have much in the way of sides. I have a side unit over where I have my makeup and everything in front of my vanity, which I can put a little tray on. I have the top of the fridge and freezer here. I can maybe fit something on there. Um, I'm just trying to work out what I want to do because I need to start displaying some of this work. It can't just live in a box under my bed so let me know what you do the only other thing um, I wanted to show you is I was going through my stash and when I first started I was like I want to stitch myself a stocking never did it but I found in my stash the cranberry row rosewood manor which I'm actually going to end up stitching this for somebody else but this is something that I've ordered 28 count even weave but I may have placed another order in the Rosewood Manor um, store because I couldn't find the patterns in the UK for the stockings so if you know where to get Rosewood Manor stockings in the UK please let me know because I'd like to collect a couple of them but yeah so I have Cranberry Row um, I have ordered the other house one which is just all the houses dotted around so I'm going to end up doing those two for um somebody but yes yeah, so i am going to be starting this at some point however i'm not going to put beads on mine i'm a little bit concerned um that the beads would fall off and i don't really want a child stocking with beads on it but i'm going to stitch i'm not sure if i'm going to use dmc diamond i've ordered some in red and some in gold so i can see maybe i'll replace that on the pattern and see how that looks instead of having beads on there but yeah, so that is something, I'm not sure if I'm going to start it next month or this month. I have got all the threads because I am going to be converting this to sulky. Um, just because I have the sulky threads. And then that way I can stitch this one up. So the fabric is on its way. It should be here next week. So this one may be a start. I'm just terrified of how to finish a stocking. I've been watching videos and people make it look so easy, I'm just not sure it's going to be that easy. But yes, so that is what I have. Um, I have a couple more things coming in the mail for haul. Oh, see, sorry, I've got a chair next to me that I had all my stuff propped over and it's falling over. So yeah, that is everything that I have to show you guys today. Thank you so much for sticking around if you've made it to the end of the video. And I really hope that you enjoyed today. If, As I said, if you have any ideas on displaying cross stitch, I would love to know. Leave them down in the description box below. 
and I would appreciate the support if you could give this video a thumbs up if you've enjoyed it and if you haven't already make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell notification so you know when I next upload. Thank you so much for watching guys and I will see you all very soon. Bye guys!